Hello, this is Brent Harris. Welcome to my living room. This is very much the same room as before. Uh, the, if you uh, watch any of my other videos, then you'd be used to seeing a backdrop with um, uh, art behind me. Uh, all of that is on this wall. I had to kind of switch it up a little bit in order to uh, in order to get some better lighting. It's kind of a dull day today. Um, so yeah, so I want to start by thank you for being here. Thanks for, you know, for clicking through this video. It's awesome. Um, what I want to do now, so in our time together, which is uh, rapidly dwindling, I don't actually have a lot of time. Uh, what I want to do is I want to establish a theory that I'm working on. So a lot of, th a lot of theories as they kind of come into my consciousness, uh, they come um, only when I'm able to actually say them out loud or sort of teach them to somebody else. And so sometimes what I do is I begin speaking without even knowing where I'm going to go. And that is definitely the case with this video. Um, <laughs> I've already I've already like attempted to start and, I, and I've kind of aborted uh, videos several times. So so this is going to be the go through. This is the real deal right now. So um, here's what we're going to establish. I want to talk about about a topic that I've been obsessed with lately, which is this, which is the disparity between your life as it is and your life as it could be. Now I realize that that sounds kind of like a, a big topic, but, but it seems really strange to me that our lives can be as they are. And at the same time, we feel as if we, as if we're capable of more. We feel like in our life, we could be playing at a higher level. We could be achieving more, doing more, receiving more, um, perhaps involved more in creative work, taking better care of our physical bodies, um, enjoying our relationships or having better relationships. And, and so we live with this disparity. And for a few of us, the disparity is not very big, in which case we don't, we don't tend to struggle too much in our lives and we don't have too much um, wanting or hankering, which is, of course, wonderful and amazing. And then there's this other collection of humans that have their, that experience a quite a big disparity where it's like, I, I feel like I have a lot of potential. And I feel like life has a lot of potential. I just feel like I could be doing more than I am. And... And, and despite having made attempts at accomplishing this and manifesting it, um, we, we tend to get thrown back to square one. And, uh, and so I want to know why that is and what to do about it. And so as I've been exploring this, something that I'm becoming aware of is that we, it doesn't seem that we suffer from a lack of guidance or a lack of techniques or strategy. So whatever it is that you wish to do, suppose you want to make a million dollars, like you can Google how to make a million dollars. And, and assuming that you don't find a sort of a, a get rich quick, you know, multi-level marketing kind of whatever, like as soon as, you know, like if you find like what seems to be pretty good, solid, sage, grounded, trustworthy advice on how to make a million dollars, then really all that's required is just to carry out the advice and do it. But, but we don't. And the same applies also, of course, to six pack abs and leaving addictions and meditation there's all it's we know what to do all the information is there we just don't do it and and if we were asked why don't we do it then the answer is well it's like you know i i have trouble being consistent um you know it's too hard uh, i don't feel like i can uh, it's not possible for me and we have all of these you know all of these reasons why Although, once again, from an objective standpoint, it doesn't seem like there are any limitations. The limitations only exist inside. So why would that be? It seems that there are two aspects of ourselves that are in, that are in um, competition, or right? like they're both fighting for the steering wheel. There's the one, there's the you that I believe I'm addressing right now, which is the sort of the, the adult part of you, uh, arguably the left brained aspect of you, the one that thinks about the future, the one that wants to make investments in the future and kind of knows what needs to be done and understands the value of putting off instant gratification. 
And there's this other part of you that is um, that is kind of like the inner child. It's perhaps the right brain. It's the it's the part that wants to sing and dance and laugh and uh, and eat all the donuts and and kind of you know live in the now and doesn't really believe in the future. And so there's these these two aspects of you and these two and and what happens is we tend to be in a sort of a a back and forth between the two of them that that just doesn't allow us to make any particular progress so like what you get instead is we make all the steps in the right direction towards a success of some kind and then and then we kind of hit this wall where like it becomes kind of hard or difficult and then then kind of like the other part of us the inner child takes over and starts going ah ah you know it was never worth it it was never possible who cares i can just get away with it this one time and all that siren like kind of like excuses start coming in and then you are you're free to just to you know well you're not free but you you kind of let yourself drop the ball and release all of your progress and then come back to square one so there's that, but then there's also, there's kind of like another layer on top of that, which is what I'm really working into now, which is there, there, there's also these two aspects of ourselves. There's the aspect of ourselves that we approve of, and there's the aspect of ourselves that we don't approve of. And so this, this is my frontier right now. So let's see if we can figure this out. So. It seems to me that consciousness is just one thing. Like consciousness, there's only one consciousness. And uh, according to my own explorations, and, I, and you know, this is totally up for debate and it's totally arguable, but it seems to me that there is only one indivisible consciousness. And the consciousness, when I talk about that, I'm just talking about like this, this I am-ness, like just like the fact that like I'm here and I know that I'm here and like that really basic wherewithal to acknowledge something. That's what consciousness is. And, and that, that is, it seems to me, that is what you are in your most basic, basic sense, draped with your personality and your body and your story and your history. So it's like consciousness inhabits a form as you, inhabits a form as me and inhabits a form as a plant. And, and it's, but it's, it's all the same consciousness. All right, here we go. It's all the same consciousness, but, but, but what it's, what it's also able to do is it's able to fragment itself into, into aspects and take on form so that consciousness can play out a drama with itself and learn more about itself. And that, that seems to be the purpose. That seems to be what it wants to do. It's kind of, it's not dissimilar to like taking the ocean. And if you were to take a bucket of water out of the ocean, it doesn't like the, the water in your bucket, it doesn't really quite stop being the ocean. And it, it still is, it's just a bucket of ocean. And there's still the same thing, although it looks like you kind of created, like you've kind of sectioned a little piece of it off and you can, it looks like you can hold it separate from the rest of it, but it's still the same thing. And, it, and it's still, all the water still ends up at the ocean at the end. It's, it came from the ocean, it goes back to the ocean and just, and just kind of delights in that kind of movement between uh, fragmenting and separating and then dissolving and reemerging again. And it just goes again and again and again. Now this happens amongst people and it actually happens, it seems, within people as well. Now, if something, this is how you get, like say if something traumatic happened to you, or even if it's just something like mildly unpleasant happened to you, we don't have to get too heavy in this conversation. Suppose suppose you got like um, a parking ticket and and suppose you know you're you're you really thought you could get away with it but then you just you get back to your car you leave the building you go over to your car you see the the ticket in the window and and then and then this kind of like thing rises up in you it's like fuck oh i wish i didn't oh, I, i'm really i'm so mad i shoulda 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 so something something very important is happening here and i, I want to slow this down because this is really this is really, I think, a, an enormous key to manifesting potential. And, I'll, you know, you'll see as we go on. So something happens where you see, like, you get the stimulus. You get the parking ticket. And what that does is it wakes up this upset in you. 
And so the upset comes up and, and what it is in its most basic sense is it's an energetic phenomenon that is happening inside of you. It's happening in your body. And so, but it's so uncomfortable and so unpleasant. It feels somewhat like disappoint or anger or rage or like, or whatever. And what happens is it's so unpleasant that what a person typically does is they actually look away from it. They turn their attention away from it and they go into the mind. And so they go into the mind stuff by saying all this should, 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 shouldn't have, shouldn't have, where where they're sort of inhabiting a, a theoretical realm that's actually not grounded in reality, but it's just mind stuff. It's sort of like fantasies. And it's actually a way of, a, it's like, it's how a person tries to erase what's happening. So that's how you get people being like, no, oh, I shouldn't have, as if, as if that shouldn't have energy, um, that, that shouldn't have energy attempts to delete the reality of the situation, although unsuccessfully. And, and it just keeps going and going and going. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. What happens is the mind, like the person evacuates into the mind and they keep staying in mind stuff until the wave of that upset eventually passes. Now, what, but the thing is, is that it doesn't go anywhere. It actually, it's, because it is, it is what Eckhart Tolle would call the pain body. It is latent pain or dormant pain rather that was already there in you that woke up as a result of the stimulus getting all antsy and angry. And then with enough time, it kind of goes back inside, but it, but, but it's sort of, it, it's not diminished it, and it doesn't, and it's not subject to decay over time. It stays there until it's ready to, to, to feed again. And, you know, if you look at it from that sense, it, you know, it, it looks for things to be disappointed about so it can kind of rage a little bit and then go back inside. And so, the, and so it's, it's uh, somewhat parasitical in that way. But very importantly, very importantly, it is a piece of your own consciousness. Just in the same way earlier about how we were talking, how we were saying that, <laughs> you weren't saying, I was saying that consciousness takes on these two forms and they start playing out. The consciousness of you is actually divided in two where it's like, it's, you know, the you that I'm addressing now, I assume that you're in kind of a neutral state and the consciousness of, of, you know, the, the emotional consciousness of rage or upset or, or sadness or whatever else. So, so there's sort of, there's sort of, um, there's like, so when it goes back inside, what it does is it, it goes dormant again. And then the you, the regular you that you are, gets taken over. But typically for a lot of us, there's lots and lots of unexpressed energy in us that is waiting, that is waiting to be released. So I want to make sure I get this right. So it's like, so when there's an experience that, when there's an energetic experience that wakes up in us. And if it's unpleasant or jittery or stressful or like it's boring, you know, boredom comes up, whatever it is, if it's, if it's, a, if it's an unpleasant experience, if, if given space and attention and if given as much space and attention as any other feeling that we have that we're not so much against, then it would do what other feelings do, which is it would be processed. And, and it's not necessarily you processing it, but it would just move on its own. It would just, it would just, the energy would just circulate, just like blood circulates in your body, just like breath moves in your body. It's like emotions, when emotions are allowed to run on their own in an organic way, there's a, there's a kind of a circular healthy element to it where it's constantly being refreshed. And in that way, there's nothing really wrong with anger or sadness or even depression. Although arguably depression is like a buildup of unexpressed sadness. But as it is, there's no energetic experience in you that's bad or that is preferable over another or, or, or that can hurt you. There's nothing that, like, that can come up from inside your experience that is something to shy away from or repress or hate or try to get rid of. Because indeed, if you try to repress or get rid of or destroy one of these feelings, 
What you're doing is you're creating a warlike situation inside of yourself. You're putting one part of you against another part of you, and then that creates conflict. And then when you create conflict, you, you further you further entrench this sense of division, and then you start getting you start getting this kind of um, of experience where it's where you feel like you don't have any control over yourself or you feel like you can't get yourself to do what you should do. And you ask questions or say things like, I don't know how to get myself to do what I should do. All right. I got to admit at this point, I'm slightly distracted by the lighting situation because there's actually like a row of lights above here. And it's creating all this like kind of fog. Um, but I feel like, I feel like if I acknowledge it, then I can, um, that I, that like, that I can get past it. <laughs> But, but it looks a little weird to me, but I'm really pleased with the video. So we're going to keep going forward. I just want you to know that I know. Um, good, good, good. Okay. So, so, so the idea, right? So there's no, so the thing is, is that if, so whenever, the thing is when there's unexpressed consciousness in you, when there's emotional experience in you that you don't pay any attention to, it doesn't just sit there like it's it's constantly looking it's constantly looking to get your attention because it's when you give it your attention when you just look at it and 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 embody it and be it and and just experience yourself as this energetic experience then then it's like that that's how the healing occurs and that's how unification occurs and and it seems that unification wants to occur, even though the pain body tends to seem to want to like create more pain and whatever. It, it really, really, all of you wants to unify. And the extent to which you're unified is the extent to which, bringing this back home now, is the extent to which you can do what you know, is the extent to which you can carry out a sequence of, of moves to get you into the experience that you want to have in order to create your life as you see it in your imagination in order to close that disparity that I was mentioning earlier because as it stands if there's no unification then it's constantly moving until you kind of until you hit that sort of wall and and then like these other like like kind of these uncomfortable feelings start to come up as you move outside of your comfort zone and so if you can if you can move up to that boundary and and instead of freaking out and going back to square one, just just stay with it and stay with the feelings that come up. Then you have the chance to unify and consolidate your circle of comfort. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so what feelings come up in you that you don't approve of? What experiences come from inside of you that you're either scared of or don't like or you feel like is wrong and not good and shouldn't be given attention? What have, there's, there's this thing where, you know how if you're sad about something and somebody will say with good intentions, they'll say, don't dwell on it, right? And then you kind of get this feeling like it's not okay to kind of sit with your feelings and sit with your sadness or whatever, you know? And maybe you even adopted that mind frame, you know, that it's not okay to, to sit with your feelings. So what, so what feelings are no, do you have inside of you that you do not approve of? What aspects of your experience do you not approve of? What in because if you if you repress them super hard, then they appear as intrusive thoughts, thoughts that you're just like, oh no, you know, no, not now, not now. I don't, you know, like this is not cool. I don't want to think this right now. What if what if they know that I'm thinking this kind of thing, right? That that's how they, that's how they come out. So it's like like if you have stuff like that, you know, it's time to really expand, like. Yeah to remove the boundary of what is okay in you and what is in you that's not okay so that everything is sanctioned. Because if everything is sanctioned, it doesn't mean that it goes away, the thing that you don't like. It just means that, that the healing can occur and everything can be integrated. There's also a really interesting feeling of awakening 
and it's so inter fuck it's so cool because because what happens is instead of switching back like you might have one suppose there's a war suppose there's a part of you that feels like you should run every day and go for runs and do cardio and it's healthy there's this part of you that's like no i, I just want to stay in and sleep in and eat pizza and and they're like you you become one after the other and when you're this one it's like oh no i was always this one this is the real true one and then this one comes and it's like no no it's always this way it's always this way and and so like they're both you i want to really emphasize this but there may be one that you identify as like more you than the other one and 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 so what happens is when you unify, when you release the boundaries, when you sanction every aspect of yourself, then, then you wake up out of that division and your perspective is augmented and you perfectly and naturally and organically and effortlessly embody both consciousnesses so that all perspectives are visible to you in at once that is awakening that that is that is the essence of awakening <sighs> so this is done by by like straight up swearing off like just making a decision that war and conflict inside you no longer serves you you make a decision never to be mean to yourself ever again never ever ever like as a a pretty general rule and rules are really hard you know good you know rules are really hard to come by that like you know that apply in all situations but like you know just really deciding never be mean to yourself ever again always give yourself the benefit of the doubt always be kind to yourself always be gentle always you know if you if you fail at something it like it's you know learn the lesson learn the lesson love the shit out of yourself and then and then begin the next attempt until you get it it's like you know whatever you're doing like it's because if you punish yourself for failing at something, all you do is just create a tense atmosphere where it's like you're around like, you know, that adult figure, that parent parental figure, or like that boss that freaks out on you every time you mess up and, and now you're stressed and you're messing up more as a result of it. Always be good to yourself. And if you do that, you will dissolve the boundaries between the different aspects of your consciousness. And then when you do that, there's no more polarity, no more polarization. And then, and then you're just left with do what you do follow the steps and then and then you get there and then you experience that reality that you see you manifest the potential and you make it look effortless there's people like um like tim ferris right like it's it's yeah like he's 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 an amazing guy and like there's a lot of stuff that he's done and he's done he does really well but if you ever listen to him speak it's like the clarity you, you don't get the one doesn't get the feeling that he's like super like um rah, like i'm gonna take on the world he just he just seems like a guy who just has no inner division he's just like oh yeah i figured this would be the way to do it and then i did it and and uh, you know then i learned and you know recalibrated and i eventually did it and that's how you do it you can do it too and all of his stuff has that kind of feeling about it and i feel like that's the way there we go cool Thank you for listening, man. This was uh, this this came out really well. I'm really pleased with this, despite all the weird lighting. I'll show you. I'll show you how it looks now. See, like those are my lights up there. I just don't like to include them um, in the frame. Sorry about that. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, okay. So that's it. All right, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, especially if you made it all the way through this. Remember, I'm a personal coach. I work one on one with people to make this happen, to close that disparity. Um, and in like, I believe so much in people's ability to close that disparity that my faith in you is already absolute, that you can be much greater than you are. So if you, if you want, take me up on a free session. Like you can have the first session for free. There's no obligations. I can't imagine a reason why you would not do this. Um, I have in the description, or I will put in the description, a link to my calendar page. So you just click through, choose your day, choose your time period, and, and I'll get an email that you you got that you signed up for a, a free um session with me and we'll go we'll make this happen um and that is all take care goodbye